Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Mountains Out of Mohills, brought to you by The Op. It's for two to four players, ages nine and up, and games generally run about 45 to 60 minutes. Moles have traveled from all over to compete in the annual Mountain Maker Tournament. In this light strategy game, competitors show their skill based on how high they can pile their molehills and by how many mountains they control. The mole that can build and control the most mountains will be declared the top tunneler and win the game. Mountains Out of Molehills is played over six rounds. Each round consists of three parts. Part one, card drafting. Part two, planning and movement. Part three is scoring and end of round. So this is one of those games that is super easy to teach but there's some strategy here. It is definitely very puzzly, some abstract things going on. And one of the really neat things is that you build this play area from the main box, the bottom of it. You have these pillars you put into play. They all fit in really nice, really snug. You have the underground, the above ground boards, and based on player count, we'll determine which side and how much of each of the boards you're gonna use. But you have these moles moving around underground. They're gonna be pushing dirt up. It's super thematic for sure. Each player will be controlling one of these fabulous moles, trying to win this competition and push this dirt up. Now, each of the moles has a colored base that's gonna match all your mounds of dirt, so it's easy to know who is who and where you're moving and so forth. Now, you're going to be basically programming your movement, and the number of players in the game will determine the number of cards that you're gonna have out for the draft, and that's really the first phase of the round or part of the round. And all these cards are going to help you control the movements of your moles and try to push that dirt up. Now there's a couple special cards, which we'll get to, but in general, these are movement cards. You're moving forward, you're turning right, you're turning left, or you're doing U-turns, and some of the turns will allow you to move as well in whatever direction you turn, giving you options to turn first or turn after the movement. So lots of different possibilities, how you program your movement underground. And then you have a couple special cards. You have a rock card, which allows you to roll a dice and place a rock anywhere you want underground. And when another mole runs into it, it will change their movement. It will force them to move in a direction. Now, if anybody else plays a rock, they'll get to supersede and change what you put into play with that rock. And then you also have the mole card. You're just trying to poke your head above ground and take a look around. But what this does is it topples the mounds, regardless of the height. So we'll get to what toppling means in a minute. But in general, those are what you're doing with these cards. And like I said, there's more cards here than you're going to be drafting. So every round of the game, you're going to have four cards to work with. Turn order in this game is dictated by the King of the Hill tokens. You're going to be shuffling these up every round and handing them out to the players. Now, part two of the round is all about planning and moving. All the fun, the guts of the game are here. You're going to be planning those four cards that you chose. You have to put them in the order that you're going to move your mole. The moles don't see well underground, so you're gonna be stacking them and putting them face down. Once you do that, you can't look at them again, so choose wisely. Then, in turn order, you'll flip over your card, one, two, three, and four. And for each card you flip over, you move your mole. Now, there's all kinds of things that can happen here. First and foremost, if you run into another mole, you just stop your movement. You're all very friendly, you're very, very polite, you don't wanna push anybody around, and same if you hit the edge of the board, you just stop your movement. Or you might run into the rock with the dice, and you'll have to change your direction, which potentially could mess up your whole plan for the game. But in general though, you're just moving. And when you do move, this is where the fun begins, is that you start to push up your mounds of dirt, which is super thematic, like I said. And you'll be putting those mounds of dirt at the bottom of each of these other mounds or mountains that you're creating. Now, along the way, if you get too tall of a mound of dirt, it is going to topple. Now, every round of the game is also going to have a limit to how tall each of these so-called mountains can be. And once you hit that limit, then it's going to topple. Now your mound that you pushed up is going to stay in place, but you get to pick where all the other pieces fall, starting with the bottom piece, moving to the first slot, second, third, and fourth, however many pieces are going to fall in that particular row or column that you've chosen. And if you create another too tall of a mountain, then that one's going to topple as well. So this is where you really have to kind of plan ahead and hope 
you're moving the right pieces into the right position and toppling things at the right time because at the end of the round is when you're going to start to score all these things. So after all the moles have moved and pushed all the dirt up, then it's time for part three. You're gonna be scoring an end of round. Now, this is what's key here, is that what you were trying to do is push your mound of dirt up so it was at the very bottom of the mountains or the stacks. And if you did, then you control that stack and you're gonna score for all the different pieces there. Regardless of the colors, as long as you have your piece at the bottom, you get points for every piece in that mountain. So that's really the key, trying to control these different stacks and topple things when it makes sense to do so. Trying to plan out your movements, however you can be thwarted, obviously, and you'll score your points. Now remember, every round of the game is going to be very different because of how the different stacks stack up in the mountains and how many pieces can be there and when things topple. Or maybe you had a mole card which caused something to topple before it was at its maximum height. So there's a lot of planning here as you get the right cards in that draft. And you'll score your points, put them in place, and you'll do this for the six rounds. And then whatever mole has the most points at the end will be the ultimate tunneler. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here is done and published. This game is ready to go. Now, obviously, the game has some pretty amazing table presence. It's got some real puzzles that you have to solve as you topple things some abstract things going on here, and just some really cute moles that you're moving around, programming their movement, if you like that sort of thing. Now, I found that there's some really interesting strategies as you topple the right mountains at the right time, and hopefully you haven't been thwarted in your movement below. But this is one of those games, again, super family friendly, and really easy to teach, but there's some interesting strategy and choices to be made. All right, folks, so if this does look like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.